acute disseminated encephalomyelitis. Acute disseminated encephalomyelitis or ADEM is an inflammatory demyelinating event of early childhood presenting with an acute onset of polyfocal neurologic deficit accompanied by encephalopathy and the change is compatible with demyelination on brain MRI. So to diagnose ADEM, you should have to have polyfocal neurologic deficits and also encephalopathy and compatible demyelination on brain MRI. Regarding epidemiology, the mean age of ADEM is between 5 and 8 years, but it can affect any age group and there is slight male predominance. The incidence ranges from 0.1 to 0.6 per 100,000 per year in the pediatric population. ADEM is usually monophasic, but recurrence can occur. If the recurrence is three months or longer after the first episode, the condition is termed multiphasic disseminated encephalomyelitis. Up to 50% of cases with ADEM have been found to be associated with more antibody positive in the CRM, and almost all cases of multiphasic disseminated encephalomyelitis are more antibody positive. An episode of ADEM can also be followed by non ADEM demyelination in a new location. In this scenario, if the MOG antibody is negative, multiple sclerosis might be diagnosed. If ADEM is followed by relapse in a specific location, such as the optic nerve, then ADEM optic nerve is diagnosed. If the optic nerve and the spinal cord are involved, then NMOSD and the latter two are frequently associated with MOG antibody positivity. Neuromalite Optical Spectrum Disorder. Regarding pathogenesis, molecular mimicry induced by infectious exposure or vaccine has been thought to trigger production of CNS autoantigen. So the pathogenesis is thought to be molecular mimicry, which is induced either by infectious exposure or vaccine. Many patients experience a transient febrile illness, mainly viral, in the months prior to ADEM onset. Post-vaccination ADEM has been reported following immunization, but the risk of ADEM post-vaccination is significantly lower than following the infection itself. When we see the clinical manifestation, initially symptoms of ADEM might include lethargy, fever, headache, vomiting, meningeal signs, and a seizure, including stats epilepticus. Encephalopathy is the hallmark of ADEM, ranging from changes in behavior and the persistent irritability to coma. Common neurologic signs in ADEM include visual loss, cranial neuropathies, ataxia and the motor and the sensory deficits, plus bladder and the bowel dysfunction with concurrent spinal cord demyelination. The clinical course is usually rapidly progressive over days, and the ICU admission might be required, particularly for patients with brain stem dysfunction or raised intracranial pressure. Regarding neuroimaging, most of the time, brain CT is seen first regarding, uh, by considering meningitis or any CNS infection, but head CT scan might be normal or it might show hypodense regions. Cranial MRI is the imaging state of choice. Typically, it shows bilateral, large, multifocal edematous muscle-like lesion with variable enhancement within weight and the gray matter of the cerebral hemisphere, cerebellum, and the brain stem. Deep gray matter structures are often involved, although this may not be specific to ADEM. Severe involvement may progress to an acute hemorrhagic leukoencephalopathy with large lesions, edema, and the mass effect. Serial MRI imaging 3 to 12 months following ADEM shows improvement and often complete resolution of abnormalities, although residual gliosis might remain. There is no biological marker for ADEM, and the laboratory findings can vary widely. CSF studies are often normal or can exhibit pedocytosis with lymphocytic or monocytic predominance. CSF protein can be elevated, and the elevated CSF immunoglobulin production can be present. Electroencephalograms often show generalized slowing consistent with encephalopathy. ADEM is a clinical diagnosis supported by MRI, CSF, and the CRM findings. The differential diagnosis for ADEM is broad, 
and the empirical antibiotic and the antiviral treatment should be considered while infectious evaluations are pending. Follow-up MRI examination 3 to 12 months after Adam should show improvement. New or larging lesions should prompt re-evaluation for other etiologies such as multiple sclerosis. Regarding management, high-dose intravenous steroids, mainly methyl prednisolone, for 5 days followed by oral prednisolone tapper, 1 to 2 mg per kg per day over 4 to 6 weeks is the first line of treatment. Intravenous immunoglobulin and for refractory or severe cases, plasma viruses is recommended. Regarding prognosis, most children experience full motor recovery after Adam, but residual defects can be seen in the cognitive deficits or behavioral changes are not uncommon. Recovery starts within days to weeks, but symptoms can fluctuate. Thank you.